Business Journal. And this uh, month, we're doing uh, on the testimonies, our testimonies, it's called. And one of the articles is called Categorically Not the Testimonies. And it's by Eric Moon of Berkeley Friends Meeting. And I have Eric here uh, on the video. Um, Good afternoon, Eric. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank you. I appreciate Great. the opportunity. Oh, sure. Uh, in addition to being uh, a member there at Berkeley, uh, you're also here the program coordinator of healing justice for the American Friends Service Committee Western Region. Is that right? Uh, correct. That's great. Um, and uh, so you did this article, um, and it's about spices. Um, now, uh, we're going to have some people who might not know spice, uh, three or four perhaps. Uh, if you ask many friends, what do Quakers believe today? They're going to say spice. Uh, mm -hmm. Spice is a handy reminder. You know it. I know it. S-P-I-C-E. Simplicity, peace, integrity, community, equality. Uh, and uh, a lot of friends think it's been around forever, but you're telling us that it hasn't. Uh, t tell us that story. Well, uh, that just that the original uh, use by friends of the word testimony was a much richer uh, word uh, with a range of meanings uh, a dozen or 20 even different ways and sometimes reading the journals you'll you'll find them re using the word testimony uh, more than with more than one meaning even on the same page um, but uh, probably by, by the 20th century we uh, the use of it it kind of dropped out I remember being part of a, a workshop at FGC one summer with uh, uh, Stephen Angel and we were looking at Rufus Jones uh, materials in journals and stuff in the early 20th century and he used the word testimony but he actually put it in quotes and and had to kind of explain uh, it wasn't uh, he wasn't writing for friends he was writing for an ecumenical you know uh, scholars of religion but I just thought that was very interesting that you know by 1910 or whenever that was the word testimony was uncommon enough among friends that you would need to you would need to quote it and uh, and you know kind of give it a, a little footnote <laughs> instead. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the spice uh, mnemonic or whatever you want to call that uh, is is a, a very uh, common kind of one. Another uh, activity I get sometimes is I get asked to come out and talk to high schools uh, on their world religions classes, and um, a really wonderful part of this is uh, the one high school particularly has student presenters where they talk about the Quakers, they're not Quakers, and then they have the speaker, you know, sort of get up and defend your your uh, uh, faith tradition or whatever, and it amazes me how many of them, you know, when they say, you know, what are the Quakers about? Well, they got these testimonies, you know. So that's what the world, I think, does, you know, kind of know about us and uh, and has that kind of view of us. Um, that idea of, a, you know, kind of short list of friends' testimonies or categories for friends' testimonies uh, goes back to, to Howard Brenton, uh, kind of after World War II. Uh, he and Anna were, were trying to establish uh, friends' meetings or help the establishment of friends' meetings in new places, uh, college towns and, and elsewhere. And uh, he was trying to kind of interpret uh, Quakerism for people that weren't Quakers or for, or for whom they were newly Quakers. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what he was trying to do. In other words, he needed some chapter headings. He wanted to discuss the the richness of the testimonies, but he needed some way to not. I mean, you got to start somewhere. You got to. <laughs> what's it talking about? You know, time is nature's way of making sure everything doesn't happen at the same time. If you're going to talk about something, you have to cut it up somehow. Anyway, he he cut his up into four categories: uh, community, harmony, equality, and simplicity. Uh, so he didn't have spices per se, but he had that kind of approach. And I've been trying to figure out where uh, spices actually, you know, the very first occurrence of that. So if any of your readers uh, can tell me that, I would be very happy as a as a scholar to know uh, that. Um, That's a mystery where, where spice actually came from. As a uh huh, yeah, that that particular uh, configuration. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember that Ohio friend that added in integrity quite quickly to uh, to Britain's uh, uh, you know list of four or whatever talking about you know that that you know kind of rock hard uh, troublesome you know sense of integrity was something that was so much a part of friends character that it would be it would be strange to leave it off in a in any kind of short list um, and we have people also every once in a while you hear someone trying to edit another letter to the acronym. S is a popular one. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. And, and I guess that's the, 
the, you know, part of the impulse that, that, that brought me to this, you know, at the time that people were saying, you know, we need to not limit it to the past, but we need to think, you know, are there testimonies for the coming century that friends need to focus on? Um, but that's what got me thinking about, you know, where do we get these categories anyway? Because um, I was a friend who came, you know, uh, from outside uh, Quakers, and um, and so I, you know, as I say, I learned from Britain. Um, I, I took that as gospel or whatever. Uh, that was part of my understanding of friends. We don't really think about our, our Quaker identity. Maybe it's just as well. Uh, very often, one of the times we, we think about it is when we're doing membership visiting committees. I don't know what you call those back your way, but the idea is somebody applies to be part of your friends meeting and you have a group of friends meet with them and, and try to help them get clear about that. And um, that's just a routine part of that uh, visiting committee is, you know, well, what's your take on or what's your to the testimonies? So even for ourselves, in terms of our, our identity, it's, it's a way that we come to kind of define ourselves. And, and I argue in the, in the article and in the workshops I've done that, you know, we need to not limit ourselves to those uh, that, in fact, our history and certainly God's concern is, is wider than that. Uh, so... Um, those are good words, but they are kind of abstractions, and the, I, I think we make a mistake when we limit ourselves in some way to those, or imagine that this is all that the Quakers are concerned about or have been historically. Um, I'm not a historian, but I'm a person that loves reading history, especially the, as they say, the primary documents. I love to hear uh, people talking in their in their own language, uh, talking for themselves. That's that's a great. Well, pleasure of mine. You put out there, it's, it is like, it could be useful in a school setting to have this. It's useful for someone who's new. Um, yeah. so, you know, there, there's reasons that we sort of gravitated towards this, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One of our readers on online um, asked, well, you know, well, what should I use now? Should we not be using these? Um, you know, is this too, too limiting? And, and so should we still be using these, do you think? Or, or are they limiting? Uh, how? Well, I guess the actual question that I keep, you know, being intrigued by is, is that a kind of approach limiting? In other words, rather than saying, if we do, if we have to have five words, or these are, or six words, or these the right five or six words, um, what I'm trying to think about and get others to think about is, is there some problem with that as a whole approach? Uh, in other words, I guess the thing that comes up for me is, it, it, would there be some way to to base our sense of Quaker identity in the experiences that precede the categories? And obviously, you have to have words in order to communicate. Um, but it feels to me like sometimes if we're so committed to five or six categories, we, we kind of have blinders on that we may not be seeing other stuff. So I guess that's my, uh, my intriguing vision is, is there some, is it possible that Quakerism is at least as hard to, to learn how to do well as, as yoga or, or Buddhism or, you know, some other faith tradition that has, you know, more a, a set of Ignatian exercises or whatever. In other words, is there some kind of rawer, rawer experience than simply saying, you know, well, do you admire these five social virtues? Um, is there something more uh, primary that we could offer to one another and say, you know, here's the experience. Here's, here's, you're out walking on the road with John Woolman. Uh, here's what happened. What sense do you make of it? You know, make up your own categories. Uh, what, what's happening there? Um, well, and if you look, I, I mean, I, you know, when you read a book like the journal, John Woolman, so he was a, a minister, uh, uh, 1700s. Um, and, and you look at it and, um, you read open just a, any random page and you'll see all these like descriptions, like uh, metaphors for God and, Yes. For testimonies and, and all of these things, it's like a, a sort of a uh, more complex language. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. And and uh, again, amazing thing in in Woolman is always that 
you know, if stuff doesn't come categorized, you know, you might think, you know, a woman was this great worker for equality as a, as a social abstract, you know, kind of category. But in fact, he cared about all kinds of things. And, and the issues come all tangled up together. That's the way, that's the way they, they organically occur. And, and he was utterly prepared for that. In other words, that was his kind of expectation that, you know, I, I might, you know, be going off to talk to slave owners, but we might need to be talking about, uh, the war breaking out again between the French and the British empires out on the frontier of Pennsylvania. Um, he, he was not a friend that, that, you know, put any kind of limit on, on God's, uh, calling certainly, uh, to himself. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I, I that's a, that's a great place to start is, is Bowman's journal, but we, we have lots and lots of journals. Um, there, we actually have a genre of, of literature, where where friends have tried to assemble stories, uh, you know, from the journals and other ways. I'm thinking of uh, the friendly story caravan we used to use all the time. That wonderful book by uh, Daisy Newman, uh, a procession of friends. I've given that to people when they applied for membership uh, several times because it felt to me like it it comes closer to being that, you know, just sort of a stuff of life. You know, not categories, not you know, sort of. Uh, uh, then diagrams like you know Brenton might offer us, but instead it's it's stories of people um, that 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 as I say I, that that appeals to me. It feels to me like that might we might regain our freshness. Yeah. Um, well, um, one of the things um, you do in uh, so you give workshops on testimonies, and you're going to give another one in a, a few weeks at the French General Conference gathering. You you do these and. Um, you, you describe in your article this uh, exercise you do. You send the workshop participants out to lunch lines, uh, and, and you ask them yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to interview people there. Uh, and, and the question you have here, um, the testimonies are important because they are blank. Um, and um, we, we, uh -huh. we, we love that idea. So um, this week we, we posted that to Facebook. Um, and uh, I'll switch over here to the categories we have here. So uh, hopefully viewers at home can see these. These are the answers that uh, French Journal readers um, gave uh, on, on Facebook and on Twitter uh, this week. The, the number one is challenging. Um, and then we have inspirational and truth guides mm -hmm. and real. Yeah. Um, are these uh, what the same kind of answers you see on your workshops? Uh, they are. Uh, we, we've we seen all of those, I think. Um, and and certainly it's it's hard to, as I say, to read any of those and not sort of say, yes, that's that's very true. That's very true. Um, uh, I'm just thinking you're having done this. Uh, you may have spoiled the, uh, the hunt for us uh, at this year's Friends General Conference gathering that uh, about the time our interviewers uh, sidle up to somebody in a, uh, in a, in a lunch line uh, there in Greeley, they're going to say, am I on camera or, you know, is this part of the Friends Journal or, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting exercise. The point of a one-word answer is, as I understand, uh, that it kind of challenges you to think, uh, you know, if I had only one word, what what single word would most go to the kind of the root or the truth of it? Um, but uh, one of your uh, commenters was saying, the problem with this is it takes us back again to single words and, and the whole... Uh, uh, you know, underlying question of the of the article is we shouldn't try to limit ourselves, you know, to to a single word. But these are are interesting words, and as I say, uh, I think that that speaks not only to the the interviewing exercise we did at the work uh, FGC workshop, but but also the kind of answers that we get when we go out. You know, when somebody wants to be a member of, of our monthly meeting, and and you ask them, you know, well, uh, what what is the role of testimonies? How have you found them? Have they been helpful? Have they not been helpful? What's your, you know, your kind of reaction to that? But again, I keep coming back to this sense of to be a Quaker, it, you need to have something more than just, you know, some kind of uh, inoffensive <laughs> opinions, meaning inoffensive to those of us who are already members of the meeting, you know, that that's, uh, that's okay. But that's in some sense, I think that's, that's not enough. That's not challenging enough that uh, you need to kind of rediscover it some on some kind of level on your own and I 
I keep wondering, you know, what kind of, of experiences could we could we offer people? Do you know this this new project, uh, Quaker Voluntary Service? Um, yeah. They they had a, a, a apparently a kind of a report back exercise with some of their uh, their volunteers, and they were trying to, to you know sort of tell those kinds of stories in terms of, of the way that they'd been involved in in a project in Atlanta or elsewhere. And I just thought, you know, it's interesting uh, that when when you start getting serious, you know, about your your Quakerism, then these you, you sort of brush by these categories. As you say it, they're a great kind of doorway maybe for somebody that's coming up, you know, from the outside. But we don't live our lives in doorways. Door Doorways are for are walking through to, to go inside and deeper or to go outside and wider, uh, either one. Um, so, um, yeah, um, let's 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 use them as a doorway, but get on about. <laughs> um, Great. Well, uh, we're we're about up at, at time here, um, so let me um, just uh, say thank you again, Eric, and for uh, everyone. Here's uh, the uh, issue, the June July 2013 issue, of French Journal, Art Testimonies, and it has uh, Eric's article, uh, plus uh, articles from a lot of great friends. Um, talking about all these issues about uh, how friends do relate to the testimony. So uh, I'd like to thank you, Eric, for joining us here on the uh, YouTubes. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the testimony that the, the Friends Journal has provided over all the decades that, that you've certainly been part of the process as well. How we would ever have done without you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully uh, we'll keep uh, Friends Journal going for years to come, and uh, of course, FriendsJournal.org is our website, and FriendsJournal.org slash subscribe uh, has subscription options, and there's even uh, one starting at $25 uh, a year. So uh, we try to make it uh, easy for people to join the, the larger French Journal family. Uh, so uh, we hope uh, viewers will. So again, thank you uh, very much, Eric, and uh, we'll, we'll see you on future issues, I'm sure. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. <laughs>